This is my Suzuki X90 that I'm about to drop $30,000 into. What? Why? Well, it all started at Jay Leno's garage. You ever seen one of these, Jay? I've seen them in magazines. I've never seen one in person. A lot of rust. Was this used as a boat anchor at one point or what? As Jay's checking out the car, he notices my Rhode Island license plate and tells me about a competition that he runs in my hometown. It's called the 30 under 30. Well, 30 under 30 means people under the age of 30 who have spent less than $30,000 to restore their car. Then I get an idea. I'm gonna take this car back to where it came from yeah. and upgrade and restore it along the way to get it good enough to be in the show. So you think I got a shot? Uh, no. No. Jay doesn't think I can do it. He thinks it's too ambitious, but I don't like being told that I can't do something. So here's the plan. I'm gonna be teaming up with some of my favorite automotive YouTubers along the way to get this thing fully restored and win the show. You think he can win? Yeah, I think I got it. If you don't win, the car then belongs to me. <laughs> Damn, you really done that. I'm really wishing I felt better about our results. I'm gonna prove Jay Leno wrong. I'm Henry, welcome to Donut. I've already spent 13 grand on this car, which means I've gotta stay under 17K on this trip, which will be totally doable. That should be fine, right? Should be fine, right? Should be fine, right? right? The competition is coming up quick, so we've gotta get a move on. We've got 13 upgrades to do before we can make it to the finish line, starting with these third member differentials. Let's get them on the car. With my current setup, the stock gear ratio doesn't match up with these huge 31 inch tires I put on in Alabama. So currently the car struggles to move these big honkers, get up to speed, go up hills, tow anything, and my fuel economy is atrocious. So we're swapping out these 4.6 gears with some 512s. That will help move this thing and give us some better torque. These things cost me $2,200 altogether. Yikes. We're also gonna install this two inch tow receiver hitch. They don't sell two inch tow bars for this car because well, it's not rated to tow anything big, but by the end of this trip, we may have some more power. So I customized this one to fit. Her car may look sissy, but it ain't go tow like no sissy. This thing cost me 200 bucks. So with my new hitch and my new gear ratio, what am I gonna be towing? Well, this. Oh yeah. I picked up this absolutely mint X90 from High Desert Auto Salvage, and you're not gonna believe how much I paid for it. This is like a luxury X90, dude. 1200 bucks. Yep, I picked up this engineless X90 that's been picked to pieces for the same price as the one I got on the East Coast. But hey, at least she's rust free. Whoa, velvet interior. Luxury. That's almost four grand, and I haven't even left California yet. I think I'll be able to spend less than 30K, totally. So without further ado, let's say goodbye to the fine people at Donut and start the journey. Let's hit the road. You haven't even painted the car, and plus, and, and where are you now? I'm in Utah. Does he have a four wheel drive transmission? No. Damn it. I'm on empty, big mistake. Our winner today is... Before we continue, let's talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. We all know life can be challenging, and sometimes we need help steering through the twists and turns. Maybe you're just frustrated with work, stressed about that project car, or overwhelmed at home. Whatever the reason, BetterHelp is here to connect you with licensed therapists who will give you helpful and unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be really hard. I mean, the right therapist for you may not even be in your area, but with BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions over a phone call, a video chat, or messaging if you prefer that. And when it's right for you, you can even schedule live sessions. To get started, you just have to fill out a few questions about your needs and goals, and then they'll match you with a licensed therapist in as little as a few days. If for any reason you wanna to switch to a new therapist, you can do it for no additional cost. There's real power in talking to somebody. Getting your thoughts out can make the biggest difference, so consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link below or head to betterhelp.com slash donutmedia for 10% off your first month. First stop is Hurricane, Utah, where we're meeting up with Matt's off-road recovery to help install some more off-road upgrades. This car stock only has 95 horsepower, so towing another shell behind it means driving super slow and getting passed by semis on the highway. But that's fine. 
I was expecting that. What I wasn't expecting was driving in 113 degree heat with no AC. This trip normally takes about eight hours, but we're having to stop every couple miles to replenish our rapidly melting ice supply, which means it takes us over 11 hours to finally get to Utah. 11 hours later. Hey, Matt. <laughs> what do you think of this thing? Oh, that's awesome. At Max, we're installing some more off-road upgrades, starting with these $400 rock sliders from Trail Gear. These were the shortest they had, and they were still too big for the X90's wheelbase, so we're gonna chop some length off the back and snub off the end with a piece of flat steel. Our next round of upgrades has to do with bodywork. I thought that was the bad side. To make that job easier, we're gonna make these sliders bolt on instead of weld on, so we can easily remove them at the next stop. We tack the sliders into place and then bend them upwards to have a nice angle for added style. Yeah, that's what the cool kids do. Yeah! I also had this winch delivered to Max. It's an Ironman 4x4 synthetic rope winch that ran me 800 bucks. Since the front bumper already has a winch bucket, all we need to do is bolt it up, wire it, and make a plate to mount the control box to. It's a good thing this plate is hidden because here my welding skills show themselves. A little bit of separation. I'm burning right through it now. But the winch fits perfect in there and I can't wait to get stuck and use this thing. In our third box came all the supplies we need for a spare tire and jerry can holder from Rotopax. This combo cost me 250 bucks and it's gonna need a little bit of fabrication. So Matt's buddy Tom Tom, who's a much better welder than me, Matt, I don't know what I'm doing. Got to laying some beads to bring it all together. So now that Tom's done with the easy part, I'm actually gonna install this. There it is. That was tough. And it fits on there really nicely. This trip is off to a great start. Everything is going according to plan until our final upgrade. These chrome Bronco mirrors I got for 130 bucks. What happened? Drop the mirror. Make that $200. I gotta buy another mirror. With all these new upgrades, it's time to test them out. So we head out with the Morvair and the Bronco to cruise through some dunes to a super dope lookout. And I gotta say, it was all going pretty well Woo! until... Oh, you're stuck now. Well, we already got stuck. Got to use the sliders right away. How many more times do you think we'll have to do that today, Matt? I think the worst is over. <laughs> Luckily, the Morvair is here, so we're gonna get tugged out. Aside from that little hiccup, the X90 is keeping up incredibly well with the Morbear, so much so that I try making my own path, only to end up doing some self-clearancing of the fenders. Yikes. That's a problem for another day. Matt had to leave on a recovery, so I say bye to Tom Tom. Bye, Tom! And head out all the way up to E from Utah to meet up with our next YouTuber. All right, next stop is Robbie Layton. Now, if you don't know who Robbie is, he also does off road recovery and is a mechanic, but what he specializes in is auto body work. Him and Matt restored a Suzuki LJ20 that had been sitting in the Sierras for 40 years, so if there's anyone who knows how to fix a rusty Suzuki, it's Robbie. What do you think? Dude. I love that the rear just sits and bounces. <laughs> I say we get these two in on the lift and get a game plan. I'm already starting to see things that freak me out. Our inner rocker is gone. Old braces are gone. Body mount going through the floor. Inner rocker totally gone on passenger side. Nothing but rust. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make an executive decision right now. We're gonna body swap. Your X90 is now gonna become the donor body. So first things first, we strip down this rusty body to a shell so we can lift everything off of the bare frame. Next, we send the frame off to get powder coated. Then we put the engine and drivetrain back into the freshly coated frame. Next, Robbie and his buddy Cody are working their wonders on the bodywork, getting this donor body all ready to be primed and painted. And while all of this is happening, I start to get extremely overwhelmed. 
This competition is only a few weeks away, and the car is totally torn apart. Will this car ever drive again? Will I make it in time? What if Robbie dies tomorrow? I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And right as I'm tweaking, I get a call I've been dreading. Hey, Jay. How you doing? We're pretty much in the painting process right now. You haven't even painted the car, and plus, and, and where are you now? I'm in Utah. Yeah, I, 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 do you think you'll actually get it there in time? Well, you sound a little skeptical, but oh, I, no, I... no, no, not at all, not at all. No, having done this my whole life, why would I be skeptical? No, no, I think that's great. And that's the great thing, too, whenever you enter a car show, you always win the first time. <laughs> so I think we'll be waiting for you. I hope you make it. Yeah, all right, bye, Jay, thank you. All right. The fire's lit again. We're making it to Rhode Island, and we're gonna stomp the competition, especially when they see this new paint job. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the Dookie Donko. Not only did we get sick new paint, but we also installed this $200 steering wheel and these seats I got from Thailand for $2,700, almost 3K for seats. I've never had more trouble clicking purchase on anything in my life. Not only did Robbie paint the outside, he also painted the interior black to make everything match and made the door card gradient match the outside. It looks so sick. Robbie, thank you so much for all your incredible work. It looks amazing. What do I owe you? No problem, man. Um, so I think it a million dollars. No, seriously, what, like, what do I owe you? So this one's actually free. We want to see him win the competition for the 30 under 30. So it's on the house. Are you serious? Dead serious. Dude, <laughs> that's so insane. So you better win. Robbie is an incredible creator, an incredible man. I've been sleeping in his house. It's so awesome. He's so, I'm just so grateful for everything he's done for me. But in reality, he didn't do it for me. He did it for you. So you guys could be inspired by his work and go check out everything he's got going on on his channel. Four to four or five videos that are gonna be coming out on the X90 build. Yeah, and the final video, he's gonna tell you how much this job would have cost. So go and subscribe to this man. For Christ's sake, subscribe. If you don't, you're uninvited to my birthday party. Am I invited to your birthday? Yeah, come on oh, through. Well then, good. So with that, we say bye to Robbie Layton and continue heading east. I own the coolest car ever! It's so cool! Our next stop is Kevin from Junkyard Digs. We're meeting up at Off The Line Performance in Des Moines, Iowa, which means I've got 18 hours of driving ahead of me. <sighs> driving this car feels really surreal. It's kind of wild seeing something that you thought of turn into a rendering and turn into reality. It's like literally having your dreams come true is uh, just an insane feeling. But we're not out of the woods yet. We still have a ton of work to do and the car show is only two weeks away now. All right, we're pulling up to off the line right now. Let's see what the guys think of this car. Dude, think of this thing. This thing is awesome. That thing's sick. <laughs> so if you haven't guessed, we're gonna add some power to this thing, but first things first, we gotta dyno it. Like, what was that, 13.13? It's the weakest car you've ever seen on a dyno. Uh, actually. Probably. So, we're gonna swap it. I can already hear you guys. Oh, he's gonna hire boost to swap it. K-swap, K-swap. No, I still have to drive this thing across the country and the show is only two weeks away now. So for that reason, we're doing a little cousin swap. We're taking the 2.0 liter engine from a 2003 Chevy Tracker, which boasts a whopping 127 horsepower. I mean, it's all right, like... It doesn't seem like much, but a 50 horsepower increase from the 79 we got on the dyno is definitely a jump we will feel. Steps one and two are to pull the wiring harness from our donor tracker and send them off to Trail Tough in Oregon. They're a company that sells everything you need to get this swap done in this car. 
Luckily, Grayson from Off The Line has gotten a head start on that, and we have a fully assembled and labeled wiring harness sent back from Trail Tough, which makes everything super easy and plug and play when going into the X90. Step three is to pull the 2.0 engine and trans from the tracker, which Grayson has graciously already done for us as well. Thank you, Grayson. Step four is to pull the engine and trans out of the X90, and the new trans should bolt right up to our transfer case. But it doesn't. The two-wheel drive transmission has an output spline that is too long to bolt up to our transfer case. I thought we'd be able to make it work with the parts we have, but I'm wrong. So we make some phone calls and see if we can track down the correct four-wheel drive transmission. Does he have a 99 to 03 automatic four-wheel drive transmission? Automatic? No, he has a manual four-wheel drive. Yeah, we need an automatic. But when all hope seems lost, I track one down at a junkyard only 20 minutes away. Garney! Carnies. Garney's and Sada. If that's the worst thing that happens on this entire swap, we'll be just fine. Oh, you're strong. I think Grayson may have spoke too soon. We broke the transfer case at the fill bolt when trying to get it out with an air hammer. Damn, you really done f that. I know. So while Eric, the OTL fabricator, fixes our mistake, we refresh some of the gaskets that were leaking from the old tracker engine. Step five, bolt the new donor engine into the X90 using the custom motor mounts sent from Trail Tough. Step six, we got some light fabrication. A few things need to be nudged around to make this thing work in this little car. The first being the power steering pump, high pressure line, which needs to be bent in order to work with the new engine placement. Then the radiator needs some new mount points. And we need to plumb a switch in order to get the fan to kick on at the right time. Step seven, wiring. Wiring can be a nightmare, but with this Trail Tufts harness modification, everything is super clearly labeled and easy to understand, making the wiring job pretty plug and play. Step eight, we gotta plumb the hoses, fill up the fluids, and reconnect the battery, and we should be ready to start this beast up. All right, moment of truth. running great, no check engine lights, but let's see how much power this thing puts down now. Let's go back to the dyno. All right, we got no tack on this thing, but hopefully we can still be able to calibrate this dyno and hit those triple digits. Torque. 100 torque. 100 torque. That's what matters. That's an improvement. It's the next morning, and I'm really wishing I felt better about our results. As I'm walking around OTL, seeing all their builds pushing a thousand horsepower, not only do I feel like a failure, 90 horsepower, I also feel like I wasted Grayson, Kevin, and everyone's time. We did an entire engine swap for about 10 extra horsepower. If you don't win, the car then belongs to me. <laughs> but there's no time to sulk, so I pack all my stuff and continue east where, on the highway, reality hits. What the hell am I tripping about? This is a better engine. It's got dual overhead cams, it's got a timing chain, it's more reliable, and plus, I can pass semis on the highway now. I couldn't do that before. I mean, at the end of the day, this thing is not a race car. And we did this swap in less than four days, which is insane. So, I'm not calling this a loss. This is awesome, this car is still awesome, and it's only getting better. Let's go on to our next stop and our next upgrade. So after many hours of driving, we finally arrived at stop number four, New Jersey. And now we're no longer gonna be bumperless. Earlier, we sent the bumper off to get chrome plate. This bumper was done by Super Chrome in New Jersey and they cleaned up and chromed it for $2,400. They turned it around super quick, so shout out to Super Chrome. Now you may recognize this driveway because today we're teaming up with 
Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to super clean the engine bay of Henry's X90. As you can tell, this engine bay is very dirty, so we want to clean it up so it looks amazing. So let's get started. Step one is preparation. We basically want to cover anything that can't get wet and remove the battery. And here are all the tools and products you need to get this job done. We are starting with our wet clean step. We have our soapy water and some brushes. Then we're going to dry everything off. We're going to remove any rust and paint any rusted pieces. And then we are going to protect everything. So we are using hyper dressing, which is very good because it dries non-greasy. And then finally, if we need to, we have some zip ties. So let's start with step number two, our wet clean. All right, so after you finish pretty much hitting everything with your brush, now what we're gonna do is we wanna rinse off certain areas of the engine and watch that dirt roll away. And then for a spot like right up here where there wasn't any water rinsing it off, we'll soak up all that dirt and soapy water. Okay, so everything's rinsed off. Now we are on to the next step, the drying step. All right, and that's looking way better already. It's not completely dry, but it's mostly dry. But we wanna pay attention to those little details. You see all these little rusted pieces here, the rusted fasteners, the metal bracket. We have a little bit of rust up here. We have some rust here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand them down and we're gonna spray paint them. That way it looks brand new. All right, now check it out. Look at how amazing this came out. All the painted bits make this look brand brand new. That's what's going to really set this car apart. This engine bay is going to look super clean. And we have one more major step before we put everything back together, and that is to protect everything. Just spray it right into your detailing brush, just like that. And then now we can work it into our plastics. It'll absorb in, and then we're going to buff it off. And to make it look, I mean, literally brand new. Look at this. That dark, rich luster. Now another little attention to detail is where there's lettering. You can't really see it. If you get a paint marker and you outline the letters, it just makes it look factory fresh. So with everything all painted and looking great, we're on our final step, and that is reinstalling all the stuff that we took off so we wouldn't get it wet. Let's also remove the plastic bag from the alternator. And then the last thing we need to do is reinstall the battery. But man, this is a heavy battery, but don't worry, I got something a little bit better for you. Oh, one of these lithium batteries, about half the weight, fits like a glove. And I know you're taking a road trip, so this button right here, if your battery dies, you hit that, and it has a built-in jump start feature, so you'll never get stranded. So here's the before and after. Before and after. So there you go, that is how you super clean the engine bay. This is looking incredible and ready for the car show. And there's one more thing that we need to do. Here are the keys, Henry, and you've just been Chris Fix. <laughs> Good luck, dude. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. After we finished the engine bay, Chris fixed my rear axle seals that have been leaking since Colorado. Yeah. You can check out that video over on his channel. We ship off from New Jersey, making a pit stop in New York to snap some photos of the car and get some reactions. And with a little more driving. It's official. We've made it back to the East Coast, Rhode Island, California, back to Rhode Island. We made it, baby. I didn't crash the car. I'm about to show it to my family for the first time. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Do not get on the bed. Look at those windshield wipers. We're also pulling up to K&D Auto, the guys who helped me get this car on the road in the first place. I love everything about it. Here we're putting on this 40 inch light bar from KC Lights because KC is now the official sponsor of Dono. And with that, the car is almost ready for the show. I just need to cover up a few more rusty bits left over from the original body because the judges are going to be looking at this car very meticulously. So I clean up the seat brackets and sliders to remove all the rust and paint them black. Now it might seem like overkill to do this on a part that nobody's gonna see, but it's the... Weird, the lights went out. What I was saying was... It... What the hell was that? <laughs> it's me, the dark mode drop. The Cars Are Pain t-shirt is now available in dark mode reflective black. I'm scared, but I want it. Ah, ah, ah. Only available in the Donut Media <laughs> Store. We're also restocking the original dark mode t-shirt. Please. And this hat. <laughs> and this beanie. <laughs> Where do I get those clothes? Only available at DonutMedia.com We've made it to the Audrain car show. The first thing this thing is featured in is the Tour d'Elegance. So we're driving around for 60 miles in a big parade of fancy cars, but the only problem is I'm on empty. 
I forgot to fill up this morning. Big mistake. I hope this doesn't affect how I'm judged. We're gonna have to fill up and I have no idea where the tour goes and we're at the very back of the line. So hopefully we come to a stopping point and we can use a jerry can, but if not, we might just get left in the dust. <laughs> we got some supporters out here, that's good. What's great is the judges are all gonna see this. It links back up with the tour, so not all is lost. We're gonna line up on Bellevue Avenue in front of the Tennis Hall of Fame, and I'm really excited to see all these cars parked. What do you guys think of this thing? It's awesome. This is wild. This thing is fantastic. Absolutely wild. I love this. <laughs> I've, I've never seen a Suzuki X90 in person. I really do love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the donut guy, yes. No way! <laughs> it's very cool. I, I can't remember the last time I saw an X90. Yeah. This is my favorite car here. Yes! This is pretty awesome. So far, I'm feeling super confident and excited about my shot at winning this thing. But that was just a warm up. Let's see if we can impress the judges more than the other cars in our 30 under 30 category. We're pulling up to the Breakers, a super fancy mansion where we'll be competing with a bunch of other 80s and 90s cars. And we're about to get on the lawn, so we're gonna throw this thing in four wheel drive. And maybe we'll have to tug out this $1.5 million gold wing in front of us. So, how much did we end up spending on this build? The first round was around 13 grand, so we were trying to stay under 17 grand here. Well, I tallied everything up, and we're up to $16,403. Just below the 30,000 mark. And of course, we couldn't have done it without the free paint job from Robbie and all the collabs along the way, so thanks to everybody. Jay's here, so we're gonna have him look at the car for the first time. Jay, how's it going? Good, good, let's see. Oh! You sure you didn't switch cars on the way here? <laughs> well, it looks good. Yeah. Remember, if you lose, I get to keep the car. Yeah. Some cars here are really nice. I know, I'm really uh, kind of worried. Jay's right. There's a lot of nice cars I'm up against. What was I thinking? No true car enthusiast is gonna pick one of the ugliest cars of all time over a Porsche 944 that looks like it just rolled off the lot. And of course, right as I'm feeling low, the judges come by to do their official assessment. All this work, thousands of miles, hundreds of hours of blood, sweat, and tears, all of it comes down to this. Our award ceremony will be beginning it in about 15 minutes. So stand by for the excitement. Okay, looks like they're beginning to announce the winners. But as they're announcing, I realized the award winners are already in their cars. No one told me to get in my car. Our signature 30 under 30 class. As I watch more and more cars roll past the stage, I get the sinking feeling. We didn't win anything. My fears are coming true. Jay Leno is going to own this car. Then, we get a phone call. They just told me to come back to my car. I'm gonna get in the car and see what's up. And first in the class, the 1983 Porsche 944 Coupe owned by Austin Spooner. Congratulations, thanks for preserving this piece of history. Really nice, really nice. All right, they just announced the first in class, so we didn't win the Porsche one. But we'll see what they have in store for me. Next, we decided to make a dual first in place in the class. What? He drove his 1998 Suzuki X90 Coupe from California, restoring it on the way. I think he started out in your garage, didn't he, Jay? Okay, this is an amazing story. This piece of crap car showed up in my garage. It was hardly running, it was in horrible shape, but the amount of effort and the amount of love and I can't imagine the sleepless nights doing this in a month and a half. It's truly the spirit of the event. It's, it's effort and passion over checkbook and that's what we like to see. Do I get to keep the car? You get to keep the car, okay. that's right. right. Dookie Donko. Stop crying. 
Stop. Congratulations. <laughs> well, there you have it. We won. We had to split the award, but a win's a win in my book. And really, the win of today we see in everybody's smile. The smile that this thing brought to so many people's faces and meeting some fans. It was just incredible to see everyone enjoy all the work with that went into this, especially the work with Matt's Offer Recovery. Thanks to Robbie Layton. Go subscribe to Robbie right now. Thanks to Off the Line the Performance and Junkyard Digs. And obviously, thanks to Jay Leno and his team for making all of this happen in the first place. Thanks to Chris Fix for getting this thing all shown ready. I'm feeling incredibly grateful to the Audrain for allowing me to be on the concourse with this monstrosity. We're going to do an in-depth video with Jay and the Audrain over on their channel, so be sure to go check that out. Subscribe and follow me on social media at Chef. Follow Donut at Donut Media. And uh, yeah, peace and love, y'all.